Welcome to the SRS Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron J. Babiar, and I'm the Training Director of Support Raising Solutions. Whether you're a new ministry worker or a veteran looking to increase your competence and confidence, Support Raising Solutions seeks to bless you in your quest to be a spiritually healthy, vision-driven, fully funded Great Commission. My guest today is Joseph Murphy. Uh, Joseph works with CCO, and uh, we've been friends for about four years now. Now, Joseph, you're another one of our uh, guests that actually comes from the the frozen north. You live up in in Canada, but I don't think that's where we met. Where did we meet, my friend? We met in Arkansas, the place that you uh, you reside in now, I believe. Yes, sir, I do. (laughs) It's a lot. It was. I was happy to go there because we went to a boot camp in March 2016, and the weather was a nice break from the winter here. It was sunny and, and very nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, people don't always understand that just because you live in Canada, it doesn't mean that you live in igloos, but you do have a lot of snow in the winter, right? That's right. So if I look out the window right now, there's probably a good one to two feet of snow outside, but we do get four seasons. Like We do have those times of the year where there's sunshine and grass and leaves and all that stuff. Good, good stuff. Now, are you a uh, are you a the snowblower type or are you a I just shovel it myself man kind of guy? Well, when I lived in a house, I was a shovel kind of guy, but now right now I live in a apartment building, so uh, no shovels needed. <laughs> so it's a, probably worth the rent to have somebody else clear the snow for you, huh? Oh, absolutely, and I have covered parking too, so don't even have to wipe Ooh. off my car. Living the good life, giving the good life. Well, Joseph, the reason that I had you on the podcast today was to dig into really one of the most common struggles that support raisers have, and and that is just, let's talk about phone calls. You know, there's there's a lot of different um, ideas and feelings and approaches (laughs) when it comes to phone calls. And uh, I know I've heard people say things like, well, you know, do I have to use the phone or we don't use the phone anymore, or people like have a lot of reasons why they don't want to use the phone. And yet you and I know that it is still one of the most common ways that people get in touch with each other other than just with texting, right? Absolutely. And I find it's actually the way you actually get a hold of people. It's by using a phone and not some kind of instant messaging system. Yep. And by the way, this is not a generational thing. I have heard uh, that people go, oh, well, you know, that's just a, that's just Gen Z or just the millennials or, or, you know, the reality is I know a lot of Gen X and boomers that they would much rather text than use the phone. Uh, But the reality is the phone is something that people can have a fear about and yet it's a great tool. So we, we don't, we don't want to avoid it. So Joseph, that being said, Let's kind of dig into this idea of what are some good strategies? What are good some, some good things that people can do to overcome their, their fear of the phone or, to, or to, to actually use the phone in a way that, that's helpful in their support raising process? Well, Aaron, I'm glad you've, uh, you've invited me to talk about this because I am indeed a millennial. So I remember getting a cell phone in high school and I distinctly remember the moment when I tried calling my friend on his cell phone to see if he would hang out with me and he didn't respond. And then I tried calling his house phone, no response. But if I sent him a text message, he got back to me right away. Huh? And and, and so I've grown up with other people who, for whatever reason, do not want to pick up the phone and they'll respond through instant messaging. So when I started support raising, I really encountered that obstacle of not just my, my peers being uninterested in using the phone, but my own kind of anxiety around picking up the phone and calling people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you shared that story because the reality is, um, you know, using the phone, it's, it's a tool that we probably are going to need, but it's not just us. We have to think about, the other people. We have to think about the people that we're, we're hoping answer the phone or what to say once they're on the phone. And so, uh, Joseph, I know that you, you've uh, agreed to come on and give people a few tips, but I do want to say this before we get too far. Um, this is great information, but this is just a podcast. Uh, this isn't really training, even though there's be some, I'm sure that Joseph, you're going to have some good tips here uh, for our listeners. This in no way, shape, or form should replace you going through an SRS boot camp. Or if your organization provides some sort of other support raising training, please do that. A podcast will never replace 
hands-on, interactive, deep dive training. We're just talking about a teeny, teeny part of it, which is the phone call. So Joseph, with that being said, uh, lead us, my friend, uh, give us give us some tips for making successful phone calls. Very good. So the first thing I would ever say to someone who's trying to make a phone call for support raising is to find a way to motivate yourself. Okay. Now, what I mean by this, in the context that I'm talking about, I've coached a lot of new staff who have gone through the process of support raising. And often the idea of making a phone call to someone to ask them for support is very scary. And so you need to connect, you need to connect the phone call to the reason why you're why are you calling the person? Because you're support raising. Why are you support raising? Because you've been called to ministry because God has a plan for you to advance the great, you know, the kingdom, the great commission is going to be accomplished in part because of your ministry and right. you making this phone call is going to lead to that being done. So it's, you need to find a way to motivate yourself to be reminded of why you're making the phone call. Mm. What a common, mm. a common thing I've seen is, to, you know, if you're go, like, for example, if you're going into campus ministry, maybe mm -hmm. having a photograph of the campus you're going to be going to, or a picture of students that you know from that campus nearby you making phone calls and you can look to that picture huh. and you can be reminded visually this is why i'm making these phone calls because i want these students to come to know christ oh okay so i like keep a keeping on like a motivational photo nearby you while you make the calls it can be just something that visually reminds you even as you might not love the phone it's like hey i'm doing this because of that i'm doing that i'm doing this because i want Christ to invade that place. And so uh, really you're saying it doesn't have to be a photo, but you're saying is know your motivation, hold on to your motivation, maybe even see your motivation when you're sitting down to make a phone call. And the reality is you'll probably make that call. Absolutely. And the second thing I would say is use a script. Okay. I know that sounds silly because we all know how to talk on a phone, but you would be surprised how much anxiety is just taken away when you are on the phone and you have a script you can refer back to. If you love to read, we have an entire blog article archive on support raising. From biblical encouragement to practical tips to stories and personal experiences. Meanwhile, there's different articles that are more along the lines of shaping culture, elevating training, and building infrastructure so that you can multiply your coaching within your missions organization. Either way, you might want to go check out some of our articles at supportraisingsolutions.org slash blog. Joseph, are you the type that if you don't use a script, do you say not enough or do you say way too much? Because I, 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 I tended to notice that people are either they're in one ditch or the other. They're, they're, they're saying lots and lots and lots and lots of words and maybe even not getting that appointment or they're not saying enough and the people are really confused as to why they're even calling. Yeah, I lean on the I say too much side and I say too much of the, the things I shouldn't be saying because – you're absolutely right. If you go through an SRS boot camp, they, they show you what should be included in a phone call. And there's very specific things that should be included if you're trying to secure a face to face appointment. So having a script not only makes sure that you're you know following the steps that need to happen for a phone call, but you're also not oversharing and not undersharing. Yeah, you know, actually, I'm fully funded at the moment, but uh, not too long back, I needed to raise a little bit more uh, for, for the calendar year that we're in. And uh, Joseph, I have to be honest, I was like, oh, I know what to say. I know what to say. And I made a phone call and yeah, I kind of knew what to say, but it took me about 60 to 70% more words to say <laughs> what I already knew how to say because I wasn't following a script. It actually, it actually, I didn't have that script open that prevented me from oversharing and saying too much, but instead just trying to set up the appointment so that I can say a lot when I sit down with someone. And so that's a, I think that's a great tip, Joseph, but, and I don't, I don't think it's just for new support raisers. I think it's for veteran people that have raised and lived off support for many years. If, if you need to raise a little bit more, even then you probably need to use a script. So that's, that's a great one. All right. Keep us going. Keep going, my friend. I know you had a couple other ideas. So the next one I would say, Choose the environment you're making the calls in very wisely because the trap I've seen a lot of support raisers fall into is they choose to make their calls from home, whether they're living with their parents or with you know their family or if they live on their own. Working from home invites so many distractions. So again, if you're a new missionary raising support and you're living at your parents' house, 
your parents sometimes will not see that you in your phone, you know, in your room making phone calls is work. And so they'll interrupt your work and get you to do other stuff. And, <laughs> and maybe you can relate to this, Aaron, like trying to do calls from home. You know, you have kids, you, you have your wife, yeah. you have people who, are, again, are part of your life that are possibly taking you away from what's the most important thing in that moment. Yeah. And I, I love my wife. I love my kids, Joseph, very, very much. I mean, I even put up with our dog and our cat. But the reality is, if I need to have an important phone call, um, there was a time when, uh, and I have an office in my backyard now, but I didn't used to. There is a time that if I need to make phone calls, I would tell everybody, hey, dad's going to be in this room. I need you to A, be quiet, and B, I need you to not come in unless it's an emergency. And then I would even go next level. I would even write, you know, write on a piece of paper and tape it on the door, you know, shush or something like that, like do not interrupt or or whatever, because uh, I needed to make those phone calls. I needed to raise our uh, up our support team and I wasn't going to get appointments. Or excuse me, I wasn't going to have people join our team if I didn't get appointments and I wasn't going to get appointments if I didn't make phone calls. And so it really is something where you have to choose your environment wisely. And if you're at home and you, I mean, seriously, if you need to go put yourself in the closet with a little pen light to get it done, then, then, then do that. But the reality is there are other places that you can make a phone call as well. But the, the key idea, Joseph, that I hear you saying there is choose your environment so that you can, so you can fully focus on the task at hand. Yeah. Cause in, like in you talk about public places, uh, a coffee shop that's nice and quiet, great place to make phone calls. A coffee shop that's full of people and different conversations, it's very hard to focus on the conversation you're trying to have. Yeah. I've actually coached people to walk outside, like write out the names and phone numbers on a sheet of paper and just walk around your neighborhood outdoors because there's something about the experience of like standing up and walking makes the whole feeling of I'm making, I'm having a conversation with somebody more realistic. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, I'll throw in a pro tip too. Uh, back in the day when I was raising our first, uh, you know, our initial support, I realized that I didn't have a place to go. And so I would go to, there was a, there was a chapel not far from our house that people didn't use very often. And so I would go to the chapel. It was basically like, you know, a quiet Sunday school room type place that people weren't in that often during the week. And I would just go in and sit in, you know, metal folding chair <laughs> at a kind of a bland table and spread my stuff out and, and sit there and make phone calls. And so, you know, to our listeners, if you happen to live uh, near, near near a church or a chapel or something like that, uh, maybe you could even go to a, a local library, depending on where you live in the world. I know in the U.S., a lot of times uh, we have libraries that have private study rooms that you're you can talk in those rooms, and and you could go put yourself in one of those rooms and and just make your phone calls for an hour or two. So anyway, that's actually a good segue, though. I know you had another tip regarding. Regarding time, tell, tell us about the whole the whole time uh, tip. Yeah, so uh, a lesson I learned in a job I had before support raising was the idea of time blocking. So realistically, there are supporters and potential supporters you have on your list that may not be home in the afternoon. They're probably at work. And you have people that if you try calling them at 9 o'clock at night, they're probably already in bed. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important, I think, when you're doing support raising and doing phone calls to schedule time blocks for yourself. So when I was support raising full time, and I encourage people to do this as well, you'd schedule one chunk of time in the afternoon to make calls and then another chunk in the evening. Mm. So you'd, you'd call everyone in the afternoon, even the people you know that might be at work, because who knows, they might pick up their cell phone at work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, true. Some people will. So you go through your all your contacts once. For those you actually get to talk to, great. You now have the conversation. For those that you go to a machine, don't leave a message. That's Again, that's just my personal approach. I, maybe you have different experiences with leaving messages, but you call everyone in the afternoon once, take a break, have supper, do something else. And then in the evening, basically start going through your same list again. So the yeah. people you already talked to in the afternoon, obviously you don't have to call them again unless they said, hey, can you call me this evening? And then you obviously reach out to those same people you didn't reach in the afternoon again. And what I found and what a lot of staff that I've coached have found is that, you know, those people who are busy in the afternoon, they're, they're home in the evening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Those time blocks. And by the way, that, that's a flexible thing, Joseph. I love what you're saying there, but also these are ideas from someone in Joseph. You're, you're someone that coaches others and raising their support. Um, there might be other ways to approach it. In fact, I know that the time block thing, what I started doing at one point is I would do mid, uh, mid to late morning, uh, mid afternoon and early evening. I, I would actually find three blocks 
Uh, and then I would I would go back later on and go, okay, so uh, who did I get a hold of when and who did I not get? And I would start like even developing some patterns for, okay, I called this lady three times between 10 and 12 o'clock in the morning and never gotten a hold of her. Oh, maybe next time, you know, when I make phone calls again tomorrow, the next day, I need to not try mid morning. Maybe, maybe that's someone I try and call mid afternoon. So anyway, the point is, uh, the time blocks, scheduling out a time where you're sitting down just to make those phone calls with the goal of making appointments, that can be very helpful because otherwise you're making calls all day long and, and you're, you, you can get a little disorganized and, and, and it's, it's actually a lot more efficient use of your time to know, okay, this is what I'm sitting down. This is when I'm making phone calls. This is when I'm trying to set up appointments. So I, I love your ideas there. So that's great. Joseph, just you know, Oh. Yeah, go ahead, please. Well, I, I know in SRS Bootcamp, we encourage someone to find an accountability partner to be there for them in their support raising. And what I would say is if you have an accountability partner, let them know when you're going to be making phone calls so they can check in with you either at the start or at the end. And and there's because, frankly, we're human beings like we can set our own schedule and we could be tempted to not follow through with it and forget about it. But if we know right. there's someone that's checking in with us all of a sudden we're a little bit more motivated to actually take the time for the calls. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. In fact, one of the things that we often say uh, around support raising solutions is that, yeah, you need, you need to get some good training for sure. Of course, you know, we encourage the SRS bootcamp, um, but also, you know, after you're done training, you probably need some coaching, you know, and that, and that may be somebody like, like you, Joseph, if somebody, you know, if you have somebody in your organization that's a coach, but most people that get fully funded, they, they have a coach, not everyone, but most people do. But then also an accountability partner, as someone who's going to go, Hey, how many phone calls did you make Monday? Hey, how many, how many phone calls did you make last week? Having somebody like that, that's not necessarily uh, your, your coach. Sometimes that might be your spouse. That might be your your CrossFit trainer. I mean, that, that could be somebody that's going to help hold you uh, accountable to, to, to reaching some goals. So we talk about that a whole lot more at the boot camp. And also, just to say this, too, this probably this might be one of our biggest uh, SRS boot campy uh, commercial episodes of the podcast. That wasn't the intent, but I think I think what I want to lean in here is 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 saying, you know, understanding why do you need to make phone calls or why do text messages or instant messages or direct messages, why do those not necessarily work as well? And when when should you do those and when should you not? And what if you don't have someone's phone number? And what if it's long distance? You know, all those kind of things. The reality is those are the type of, uh, of information that you really learn a whole lot more about that stuff at, at training. And so we definitely encourage people to, even if your organization doesn't do an SRS boot camp, uh, you know, go go to one or, or make sure you go through whatever the training that your organization provides, because those are the type of things that you should be learning uh, via support raising training. Now, Joe, speaking of the, the SRS, boot, SRS boot camp, you at CCO, you have uh, you, you, your organization has said, we're going to use this training uh, within our organization. And so with that, um, you've actually become a, a certified facilitator, right? That's correct. Yeah, I'm one of two cert or certified facilitators that CCO has right now. Okay. Okay. And so with that, what that means is, of course, you know, the SRS has a quote unquote public boot camp uh, pretty much every month of the year and even some that we do internationally. But sometimes missions organizations will uh, ha they'll, they'll designate a person or two to essentially become really, really good experts <laughs> at, at doing the boot camp and facilitating it and then just doing it in-house. So I know that Micah May does that with FCA and I know that you do that with CCO and I know Aaron Bergen does that with SIM and all that kind of stuff. And so you've been a, you've been a certified facilitator for, for a while. H how many boot camps have you helped to lead internally within your organization? Internally, I've been involved with four of them. I've been a facilitator for two of them. Okay. Okay. And how much time do you think it takes people? Now, this isn't scientific, but how much time do you think it takes for people to, before they begin to really own and, and, and realize how really important and maybe even difficult phone calls are? How much time does it take someone to kind of begin to really grasp that as, a, as its own topic? I think pretty much the first time you you sit down to make phone calls, you look at you stare at your phone and you start to realize, oh, I have to actually pick this thing up now and use it to talk to people. You you realize it right away, at least I did right away. And 
my experience coaching, it's, you know, it's one of the first thing gets talked about is you see your dials are not at the goal that you set. It's like, why is that? It's because, well, I'm afraid of the phone or because I don't right. know how to succeed at making phone calls. Right, right. And in this day and age, your phone is a lot more than a phone. I, I know my, uh, my, uh, my game of choice that my wife put on my phone because she wanted me to play it with her. It was called Matchington Mansion. And I'm not even addicted to it. It's just kind of this little game. But now it's on my phone. And I, when I was raising support back in the day, Joseph, I actually had to just delete all the games off my phone. Because I was very inclined to be distracted by them. So that's that's one more of those little tips like, hey, if you're really going to do this, you need to, like Joseph, like you said, you need to be motivated, have a script, choose your environment wisely, schedule time blocks, and probably even delete <laughs> distractions off your phone. So anyway, hey, Joseph, it's been great to have you on the podcast today. Any any last words of, of wisdom or scripture or anything else you, you'd want to share uh, with the listeners before we close up this episode today? Yeah, I'd like to share a scripture from the book of Joshua. So in Joshua 1, it says, I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And I share that scripture just to, to, to give a wave of motivation and confidence to our support raisers out there who are in the midst of it, who are support raising right now, and they're looking at their phones, and they're worried, and they're scared. They're worried what the people are going to say. Know that the Lord is with you in your support raising, and know that he is inviting you and challenging you to be strong and courageous in your support raising. Amen. Good word. Good word. Well, Joseph, thank you, my friend, for joining us on the podcast today. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you. Thanks, Aaron. I really enjoyed being a part of this today. Thanks for joining us for this episode. We would love to hear your ideas for future content. Please visit supportraisingsolutions.org slash feedback to share your thoughts and questions. Also, wherever you download your podcast from, be sure to subscribe for future episodes and come back each week to gain more insight into the process of building and maintaining your personal support team.